Ayan. Uh, good morning po ulit sa lahat. Uh, again, welcome to the third webinar na po ng Filipino Science Hub. So for today, we will be uh, shifting gears uh, with a career talk about agriculture. And uh, the title of our webinar today is Agri 2020, New Perspectives for Agriculture. Next slide, please. Okay, so pointers lang po for this webinar. Uh, kindly mute your device's microphone and keep your cameras turned off. Uh, reserve questions toward the end of the presentation. And you can send your questions via the Zoom chat or the YouTube comment box. And uh, recording uh, without consent is, can be penalized by law, so please don't record the session via your personal devices. Next slide, please. And uh, let me just remind that the Q&A will last for 30 minutes after the lecture. And yung pong mga certificates will be issued to Zoom and YouTube participants who are Phil Sci-Hub followers. So we have multiple media platforms. Meron po kaming Facebook and YouTube. You can uh, follow us on Facebook and also in YouTube. Uh, subscribe po sa aming channel and ring the bell para ma... Uh, ma-update po kayo kung meron kaming mga bagong events. And uh, it will be posted yung pong Google Form link sa Zoom chat box and YouTube live comments after the Q&A. And slides will not be shared but web lecture video will be uploaded on YouTube and Facebook after the event. Next slide, please. Uh, to, to know more about our page and our uh, advocacy, I will uh, give the floor to one of our members, Dr. Janice Avirilia. Yan. Um, magandang umaga po sa ating mga guro, mga estudyante, lalong-lalo na sa aming mga speakers ngayong araw na ito, Sir Dakila and Sir Jim. Ako po si Janice, isa po akong Filipina scientist na nakabase ngayon sa um, U.S. So bago tayo magumpisa ng seminar natin ngayong araw na to, nais po namin gamitin ang pagkakataon na ito para maipakilala muna namin sa inyo ang pinagmulan ng Phil Sci Hub. So um, in 2012, naitatag po siya at nagawa yung Facebook page, formerly known as Batanga City Science Hub, Science Hub. Bilang ang ating founder po na si Dr. Jeffrey Bungkin ay Tubong Batangas. Um, naglalayon po ang page na ito para sana ay mas mapalawak pa ang kultura ng science, technology, engineering at math sa ating bansa. And although naging inactive yung page natin ng ilang taon ngayong 2020, muli pong nai-launch ang page. Um, kasabay ang matinding suporta mula sa mga kaibigang scientists ni Dr. Bungkin sa loob at labas man ng bansa, kabilang na po ang inyong lingkod. So sa pamamagitan po ng pag-attending nyo ng mga webinars namin, um, sana po ay mas madami pang kabataan ang mahikayat natin na mag-aral ng science para na, para na lang din sa ating bansa. Um, okay, Martin. Next slide po. Thank you, Ati Jaja, for uh, introducing our page. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. All right. Uh, Mag, uh, mag a na po kami ng, or ito ba talaga yung kuya Jeff? O dapat Wait, mag, yung... mag lecture na tayo, mamaya na muna yan. Muna okay, yan. sige. Pwede, pwede yung pakita nung slide ni Nadax, yung teaser? Or wala? Wala, wala. Mas essential. Okay, sige. So, uh, for today, we will be having, uh, Yung webinar po about agriculture. So again, medyo nag-shift po kami towards the career na pwede nating uh, puntahan kapag ka under ka ng STEM track. So agriculture is one of the, kumbaga parang napansin po siya ngayong time ng pandemic kasi parang mas napahalagahan po ang aming sektor at pati na rin po ang mga magsasaka. So for today, uh, magdi-discuss po ang aming mga speakers ng mga new perspectives uh, perspectives for agriculture, kung ano ba ang meron sa agriculture para sa mga bata 
para sa mga kabataan or para sa atin na mga teachers. And this career guidance talk for uh, STEM teachers and students will be uh, delivered by two of our speakers. So our first speaker is uh, Mr. Dakila Olfindo. Siya po ay uh, graduate ng UPLB or University of the Philippines, Los Baños. And nag-start po siya and founder and CEO ng isang consultancy uh, firm na tinatawag na Dream Agritech. So mamaya po, uh, sasabihin ni Dax kung ano yung aim ng kanyang firm or ng kanyang startup company. And our second uh, speaker is also a graduate of University of the Philippines, Los Baños. And siya po ang Philippine representative to the Young Professionals for Agricultural Development. Siya po si Mr. Jim Leandro Picano. And also, Jim will talk about his advocacy more and uh, yung uh, organization na sinasalihan niya mamaya po sa kanyang talk. So without further ado, uh, I'll give the floor now to Jim and uh, Dax. Hello, good morning po. Good morning, everybody. Hello po sa lahat ng nakatune in po sa webinar ng um, PhilSci Hub. And we, we just, um, before we start, we just want to thank uh, PhilSci Hub for giving us the opportunity to speak um, to our uh, teachers and to students here today. So before yes. we begin, I think um, we would like to introduce ourselves a little bit more. So Jim, uh, mauna ka na. Okay, sure. So hi, good morning. Thank you also again to just to reiterate, no, thank you to Phil Sihab for inviting us over and giving us this opportunity to speak and share. Um, I think yung pinaka ano po yung uh, I would focus on maybe the two the two hats that I I wear, no. Uh, one is with Dream Agritech, I serve as the VP for operations with Dax. Uh, to give you more background on Dream Agritech, Dax, Dax will will introduce that. But with um, with the YPARD Philippines, which is Young Professionals for Agricultural Development, it's an international network po where we at actually advocate for the stronger engagement of young people in agriculture. So, uh Naririnig po ba ako? May mga nagsasabi po yatang no audio daw po. Na? Yeah, we can. Yeah, you're, you're okay. Jim, you're okay. Clear. Akala ko, akala ko yung problem na sa akin. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, basically, YPART Philippines is an international network. Uh, we have our headquarters in FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization uh, of the United Nations in Rome. So there are uh, about 73 country chapters around the world. Tayo po ang uh, nagsisilbing country representative for the Philippines po dito sa, sa atin. And um, what we're doing is we actually have a lot of um, activities or initiatives in terms of how we want to promote agriculture to young people. Uh, kasama na po dyan yung agriculture and the arts na kung saan na Noong 2017 ay nagbuo po tayo ng musical production using the theater uh, art or medium to convey the message for youth in agriculture. So ito ay uh, pinerform doon sa UPLB noong 2017. Um, we also had mentoring sessions uh, where we, or at least a mentoring program where we took in 10 young people as mentees and then we paired them with senior scientists or researchers or academicians para ma-train or at least ma-mentor yung mga young professionals. So, um, mamaya makikita din po natin yung ano ba yung perspective na pin kinakampaign din po ng YPART in terms of how we want to show young people the opportunities uh, in agriculture. So, I think that's enough from, from my end, Dax. Take it away. Dax is muted. Uh, okay, I'll take it away. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Jim. Um, hello po. Good morning po ulit sa lahat na nandito sa webinar ng Philsci Hub. So, ako naman po, uh, yun nga po, like, uh, tulad po ng sabi ni Sir Marty, uh, UPLB graduate po ako and um, I took up agriculture with majoring in horticulture. So, ang aking pong um, kwento na medyo malalaman niyo po mamaya. Uh, so I was, uh, I started off, my first job was uh, as a university researcher 
under my advisor, Dr. Leon Namuko. So we uh, we toured uh, the Philippines kasi uh, we were checking if yung package ng technology na dinevelop ba ng ating mga mga scientists from different state universities ay nakakarating ba sa ating mga farmers. So that's uh, that is also one of the reasons kaya nabuo yung Dream Agritech. Uh, Dream Agritech is a uh, consultancy firm that aims to bridge the gap between the potential Filipino investor in agriculture um, and actually uh, helping them make the actual investment. Kasi nakita namin na isa sa mga problem ng mga potential investors natin ay they always say that they lack the know-how or they don't know the first thing. Um, wala silang alam tungkol sa agriculture. And yun yung gustong i-address ng Dream Agritech na na kinocompose naman ng mga agriculturists from different fields of specialization. So from animal science, soil science, um, meteorology, forestry. So lahat ng yon nakapaloob sa Dream Agritech. And yun yung gusto namin ma-address. Um, gusto namin maalis yung, yung agam-agam nila or yung, or yung doubt nila na mag-invest by providing them the knowledge, the technical expertise na galing naman sa amin, sa Dream Agritech, from our collection of agriculturists and our affiliates then who have technical expertise. So uh, we want to encourage um, investment in the sector through that way kasi nakita namin na sorely needed yung investment. Dahil nga dun sa time ko, uh, as a researcher, uh, nakita ko yung need na matransfer yung knowledge from the state universities, from the knowledge hubs, from the schools, towards the farmers, towards the users na, na mga nasa field. So um, that's, a, that's a bit of a background. And I also worked as a farm manager and that I din akong um, enterprise development director para sa isang foundation. So uh, itong Dream Agritech has been a combination of uh, my passions, agriculture and entrepreneurship. So kaya andito na tayo ngayon. And we just uh, recently celebrated our fifth year uh, and ayun. so I guess we will we can now uh, jump in to the presentation uh, Dream Agritech Agri 2020 New Perspectives for Agriculture. So uh, just to give you a brief outline of, of today's presentation, you know, so we just have four key points. Um, number one is why agriculture. Uh, number two, we're going to talk about perfect agriculture, emphasis on the word perfect. Um, that will be discussed by Jim. And we will also be showing the fruits of our labor. And then we're going to try and encourage you to get, um, encourage you and your students to get into agriculture. Okay. Uh, for, why agriculture? Yeah, so this is a, um, this is a farm in um, somewhere in the northern Philippines. So uh, Jim, Jim has always said in all of his talks, um, he will be discussing, um, he, has, he has been able to be given the chance to speak you know, in international forums. And he has always said this, um, food security is national security. And I think um, it is, um, mas, um, mas lalong nadadagdagan yung emphasis dito, lalo na ngayon sa panahon ng pandemya natin na ito. No? So nakita natin kung gaano kahalaga yung food security. Um, para dun sa mga hindi po nakakaalam, 24% po ng mga Pilipino na nagtatrabaho ay nagtatrabaho po sa agriculture sector. Although this has been, um, this has gone down, this has gone way down. Um, noong 2012, ang nagtatrabaho sa agriculture sector ay 33%. So um, th um, this is according to the PSA. Um, this is from the Selected Statistics on Agriculture. So it has gone down 9%. So nakita natin that there has been a decreasing trend um, pagdating sa agricultural workforce. Uh, next slide, please. And back then, ang average age ng Filipino farmer natin is 57. So that was seven years, eight years ago. So if you are going to compute that or if you're going to extrapolate that to today, uh, which is uh, 2020. So siguro mga 64, 65 na ang average age ng ating mga farmers. Bakit ko masasabi na 64 and 65? Dahil hindi siya masyadong nadadagdagan. Um, during my field visits, during my field uh, studies, uh, we have seen the decline of interest pagdating sa youth. 
Um, they, uh, they take um, other jobs such as construction, um, um, other lab labor jobs, except agriculture. So because they reason out, uh, mababa yung pay, mababa yung um, ma malaki yung risk, and marami masyadong variables for getting sa agriculture. But um, ayun, we'll see um, how we can address that and we'll see um, how we can change this uh, trend of um, aging farmers. So you farmers not retireable na sila. Um, they're at retirement age and there is a need, there is a sore and dire need for new blood for the new generation and the next generation of Filipino farmers. And, and, and also, let me note that this is a global trend. This is a global problem. Okay, next slide, please. So, para, and then, um, gano ba kalaki? Gano ba kalaki ang kinocontribute ng agriculture sa ating bayan? So, ang agricultural sector's contribution to our, our gross domestic product is 814 billion pesos, which is 8% of our GDP. Again, tulad nung employment rate natin or employment statistics natin, this has also gone down over the years. From, a, from the former level of 11%, now it is down to 8 So there's also a need to uh, streamline. There's also a need to strengthen the agricultural supply chain. So makikita natin yun sa effect niya sa GDP. Next slide, please. So yun, um, paano nga ba kami napasok sa agriculture? So um, yun nga, pareho kaming UPLB graduates ni Jim. And bago ako magkwento nung akin, uh, Jim, um, can you tell them how you got into agriculture? Hello. Yeah, so thanks, Dax. No? Um, just to share, maybe um, I think yung, yung for the interest of everybody now, uh, I actually grew up in the city. Uh, if you're wondering na bakit na pa sa agriculture, that's the same thing that most of my high school friends wondered na bakit nag agriculture to si Jim. Uh, I came from an international uh, school. I was a scholar in an international school then in Cebu, and um, most of my friends went to you know the 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 big universities na the, the private universities in Manila or in Cebu. And ako lang mag-isa pumasok sa UP. And what, what, what was the reason behind that? So the story behind that really was, I mean, kasi we, we want to share sa akin kami nanggaling and then maybe at least also to encourage the students or at least we could also share this with the students na ano yung mga nag-trigger in a positive way na pumasok sa agriculture. Um, so given that background, I grew up in the city. I uh, was in that specific type of school. My interest was mainly in business. Uh, our family was into real estate business. And I actually told my dad, I want to apply for scholarships at uh, National University of Singapore, no, sa NUS. Kasi yun ang feeling ko may magandang real estate uh, degree at that time. So uh, my dad, who was, you know, who's also into real estate, for, who's been into real estate for a long time, siya mismo nagsabi na, Food is actually the next frontier. So, sabi ko, okay, um, anong gagawin ko? Sabi niya, try out agriculture, consider agriculture. Um, and so, I, went, I said, ano, ano agriculture? Mag, mag, magsasaka ako, ganyan, magpapagbilad ako sa araw, ganyan. So, yung, yung normal stereotype, that's actually, that was me back then. Uh, I was thinking about, Ganun ba, mabibilad ako ba sa araw, ganyan, ma, you know, mangingitim ako, yung mga ganyan, ganyan bagay. So, the same stereotypes or the same perceptions that we most Filipinos have towards agriculture, I went through that phase as well. It was only until uh, 2009, right the year before I entered college, na sinama ako ng dad ko to one of his business trips in Batangas. And uh, he had a client na may farm. And... Doon sa, sa business trip na yun, yun ang nag-spark ng interest sa akin because I saw the business side of agriculture na sabi niya, okay, ito, madaming coconuts. Uh, instead of doing copra, which most people would do, uh, which most Filipinos would do, na mababang income, why not go into 
you know, processing, virgin coconut oil, cocoa sugar, uh, yung mga ganyan, coco choir, coco peat, yung mga ginagamit sa, ano, as medium for growing plants, and briquettes, or all of these things. So, those were things that sparked my interest na, okay, you have this much, how much yield can you produce? How, how much income can you get if market price is at this level? So, yun ang nagpapas spark ng interest sa akin na the business side of things and i think uh suffice to say you could you could say na ba, hindi naman sabihin na mukhang pera pero you know motivation wise that's what motivated me to to venture into agriculture so i think uh like i would say maybe in the later slides it's important to find which which sparks the interest of the younger generations to go into agriculture. So, yun, for me, it was the business side of things. And I think many young people would also like the idea of the business side of things. So, yun, um, Dax, ikaw, paano ka nakapasok sa agriculture? Okay. Or so, ba't ka pumasok? <laughs> ako, ba't ako pumasok sa agriculture? So, um, yung high school ko nun, uh, when I was in high school, uh, we had agricultural classes. No, Since I was first year, I'm uh, up until I was four, I was in fourth year. So three quarters in a in a year, agriculture kami. The other quarter was reserved for home economics and um, yung hele yung hele noon. So so ayun, um, noon pa lang, high school pa lang, uh, medyo dinidrill na sa amin yung um, basics ng agriculture. So from uh, from there, it was my first experience to na pumunta sa isang palayan at lumublob at mag mag-araro ng uh, isang plot ng rice field. So pinag-alaga din kami ng isang plot namin of our own, a vegetable plot. And we also took the time to raise chickens and a pig. So noon pa lang, high school pa lang, meron na akong um, a little bit of a background pagdating sa agriculture. Pero hindi ako interested sa agriculture. Kasi nung nagkaklase kami, um, siguro like any other uh, common student or typical student, I had really a uh, hard time, you know, managing um, that farm, um, given that we were um, very young that back then. And wala akong passion, wala akong, uh, wala akong amor, kumbaga, sa agriculture noon. And up until uh, um, the entrance exam season came along, nung pagdating no mag-fill up na ako ng form for the entrance exam, so, hindi ko talaga alam. Hindi ko talaga alam kung anong ilalagay ko. And I, I think um, if you have watched um, any of our previous um, vlogs, our previous interviews, our previous uh, webinars, lang like kung sinasabi na hindi ko gusto nung una talaga yung agriculture. I, I, um, I had no idea that I would end up um, working for the industry. So noon, noong time na ng application ng form, um, college uh, entrance exam, Ang nangyari lang, um, nakinig lang ako sa advice ng mama ko. So sabi ng mama ko, um, you should go uh, where nobody is going. You should um, buck the trend. You should swim against the current. So pumunta ka sa agriculture kasi kailangan kayo dyan. And pumunta ka sa agriculture kasi kung meron mang isang negosyo na hindi ma-out of style, yun yung pag-produce ng pagkain. Kasi araw-araw may kumakain. Araw-araw may nangangailangan ng pagkain. And doon ka pumasok sa industry na araw-araw kailangan ka. So sabi niya, kahanin niyo dyan yung mga doktor, abogado, engineer. Kasi kailangan natin yan eh. Kailangan ng society ang magsasaka. Kasi hindi uusad ang engineer, hindi uusad ang doktor, hindi uusad ang mga iba pang um, profesyon kung wala silang pagkain. So kami, um, so I took that to heart. Ano? I saw that agriculture was the fuel um, lit literally and figuratively for other professions. So, pag, nung time na yon, okay, sige, hindi pa rin ako masyadong convinced, hindi pa rin ako masyado talagang um, into it. Parang, eh, okay, sige ma, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it for you. Um, so, first few years of my college life, it was a struggle. Kasi, hindi ko pa rin talaga nahanap yung sarili ko sa larangan ng agriculture. So nagbago lang siya when when I was um, conducting already my OJT. So medyo late stages na to nung um, ACADS ko no. Uh, nung nakapag-interact ako sa isang farmer, sa mentor ko, isang mentor ko um 
batiin ko lang po si Sir Antonio Umali from Tagaytay. So siya yung talaga yung nag-turn around nung buhay ko pagdating sa agriculture kasi he made me um, interact with the farmers. He made me um, live like them, eat like them. So na-experience ko yung buhay nila sa araw-araw. And sinasabi nila napakahirap maging farmer, napakahirap magsaka araw-araw. Pero kung meron kang proper system, kung meron kang proper uh, guidance, hindi siya mahirap. Imagine, uh, papasok ka, gigising ka ng 4 a.m., papasok ka around 5, 4 to 5, magkakape ka, magbe-breakfast ka, 5 na sa field ka na, and then you're home by 10 kasi mainit na. So parang sa- sabi ko, uy, okay yun na Saglit lang ako nag-work. Tapos hindi pa ako nakakulong sa isang office. Um, I'm breathing in fresh air. I'm seeing uh, great scenery. Oo, mainit. Oo, uncomfortable. But it doesn't last long. And the benefits are too great. So, yun din. Yung isa nakapag-attract sa akin. Ano, nung pinakita ni Mang Tony sa akin kung magkano yung kinikita niya. Grabe. Um, hindi ko na masyadong i-reveal kung gaano kalaki. Kasi <laughs> baka, baka maraming mamasko kay Mang Tony. Pero ang akin doon... Um, hindi totoo yung notion na it's hard to earn in agriculture. Um, if if uh, if if Mang Tony is can be the model for that, I think it could be replicated across the country. No? So that is how I got into agriculture. Next slide, please. So para sa mga for the benefit of our audience, um, ano nga ba yung mga majors pagdating sa Agriculture na course. So, nandiyan ang agronomy. So, these are the study of your field crops. So, these are your more of your cereals, rice and corn. So, pagdating naman sa horticulture, meron tatlong components yan. Vegetable production, fruit and plantation crops production, at yung landscape ornamentals. So, nandiyan yung um, sa vegetables, alam na natin yan, mga gulay natin. Fruits and plantation crops. So, these are your coconuts, mangoes, pineapples, abaka, Lahat ng kailangan i-process, rubber, coffee, chocolate, so nandiyan yan, so horticulture. And of course, landscaping and ornamentals, yung mga ating mga uh, orchids, mga bulaklak natin, gardening. So nandiyan yan, horticulture yan. And of course, meron din tayo animal science. So sa animal science naman, I think uh, sa UPLB, merong apat yan na uh, major divisions. Ano? So meron tayong um, cattle production. Meron din tayo dairy production. Meron naman tayo sa swine. And meron din tayo sa poultry. So, nandun lahat yun. Um, cows, chickens. Uh, tama, cows, chickens, and pigs. So, plant pathology naman. Yun yung uh, study sa mga disease ng mga animals. So, yun yung mga bacteria, viruses, and fungi that affect animals. So, kasama yan sa uh, BS Agriculture. It's one of the majors. Entomology naman, pag-aaral ng mga insekto, ng mga peste natin sa agriculture. Soil science, ayan, isa tong major na very, very um, uh, underrated. Napak, um, as I experienced sa field habang nagtatrabaho ko, napakahalaga ng soil. Um, na, 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 na overlook natin yung kahalagahan niya. And soil is an organism in and of itself. Uh, so napakahalaga na kailangan alagaan natin yung soil and how to work it properly using science. So, ayun, kaya soil, science. So, um, isa naman, isa pang major is agricultural extension. So, eto, dito pumapasok yung ating mga uh, magigiting na kawani ng gobyerno from ATI up to your local agricultural offices. Yung pagpapakalat ng scientific information mula sa mga universities papunta sa mga farmer, yun ang trabaho nila. Agricultural extension. And, ayun, dun, na, dun din na linya ang Dream Agritech. So, uh, Jim, can you kindly give them a brief description nitong last two natin, yung agri-systems and landscape agroforestry? Yun. Uh, so, agricultural systems basically talks about the um, the interaction of the different components. So ito yung major ko actually sa BS Agriculture. Uh, same same maybe on the on the side of 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 what Dax uh, Dax's mom was saying no na go against the flow. Ako ang naging ang naging inspiration ko to go into agricultural systems was um, 
kalimitan ng mga BS Agri students pumupunta sa mga quote and quote bigger majors no yung mga kilalang majors so ako inisip ko yung kung kung gusto kong magnegosyo kung gusto kong tumaas yung value ko as a as a person pupunta ako sa kung wala masyadong supply so wala masyadong pumapasok sa agricultural systems kaya sabi ko parang interesting to na ano bang ano bang meron dito so anyway I went to agricultural systems and the focus of agri systems basically is uh, the interaction of the social, technological, um, economic, environmental, and the political or institutional um, aspects of the agricultural system. This could be at the farm level, na interaction, or at the community level, or even at the you know, at bigger scale, provincial, regional, national level. Na. So, uh, though, though the analysis of, of these things helps the, the student in agricultural systems understand better ano yung impact ng isang decision sa isang parte doon sa ibang mga parte ng sistema. Uh, landscape agroforestry would be the, the interaction of the agricultural side of things and the forestry side of things. So uh, there's, there's a term that we call ridge to reef approach. No? So it really covers most of that ridge to reef kind of approach na from the sloping area, from the upland, the hilly land, uh, to the lowlands, ano yung interaction ng ginagawa sa taas at ano ang mga impact niya sa downstream. At in the same way, ano yung impact ng mga land use change when you incorporate agricultural practices, anong impact niya sa environment. So malaking bagay ang pag-analyze uh, at pag ng interaction ng agriculture with the forest and natural resources of a certain local, uh, location. Okay. Okay na, Jim. Yes, Thank sir, you, no? Sir. So, meron lang ako correction, no? I think nabanggit ko daw kanina na yung plant pathology ay sa mga animals. Uh -oh. No, sa, sa plants ito, sa plants ito. Plant, I'm sorry, plant. sorry. <laughs> plants. Okay, okay. So, thank you, thank you for that correction, ano? Thank you sa mga nanonood na na merong, um, na kinol agad yung attention ko. So, that's the benefit <laughs> of being live. Uh, ayun. Plant pathology is the diseases of plants, of course. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for that error. Okay, so... Uh, Balik tayo sa slide, uh, Jim. I think there are still um, some agricultural-related courses. Naman yung ating next slide. Yeah. Okay, so ang ating mga other agricultural courses, so uh, sorry, I'm just, I'm, I'm also looking at our YouTube, no? so doon ko lang nakita na <clears throat> naka-on na pala yung slide natin. So meron din tayong BS Food Technology. So nandiyan yung Food Chemistry, Food Microbiology, Food Engineering. So kung nagtataka kayo kung paano yung orange juice na galing sa orange ay nagiging powder, sila yon, sila ang, <coughs> excuse me. Sila ang may kasalanan noon or sila ang may gawa noon, food technologists. <laughs> sorry, hindi naman kasalanan, sorry. Uh, okay, so there are also um there are also two allied courses in the agricultural industry from the College of Economics and Management, which is yung Agricultural Economics. And I think ito magiging patok to sa mga kabataan. Agri-business management and entrepreneurship. So itong dalawang ito, it studies the whole supply and value chain naman ng agriculture. And I think pagdating yung separation ng dalawa, yung agri-economics and agri-business, agri-business is more on the management of the farms, more on management, economic management of the system in the farm level. So I think isa yun sa mga um, distinguishing uh, characteristics nila between them. So meron ding, um, eto, buhira ang kumukuha nito kasi sobrang kailangan wow ka dito para makumuha nito. BS Agricultural Chemistry. So this, this is, um, this is uh, a field na kung saan na-formulate natin yung mga um, chemicals na kailangan natin gamitin pagdating sa agriculture. So these, please take note that these are not merely or synthetic or um, conventional chemicals. Ano? Pati yung mga hormones natin, I think nakapaloob din dito sa chemistry na ito kasi you need to, um, you need to transform them into a form na magagamit ng ating mga plants. So this, this is one. And then, we have also BS Agricultural Engineering, which has been recently renamed sa UPLB na Agricultural and Biosystems Engineering. So nandito, um, 
I think I'll just give a brief example of their products. So yung mga tractors natin, yung mga machines na ginagamit natin for processing, yung mga machines na ginagamit natin for harvesting. Ayun, sila ang nag nag um, co-conduct or nag co-construct nitong mga bagay na ito. Sila rin ang in charge pagdating sa meet- agrometeorology which is um yung science naman of using weather as a predictor for a farming system. So, uh, ayun. Yun yung mga agricultural courses. So, kung makikita nyo, napakalawak ang daming pwedeng puntahan pagdating sa field or sa larangan ng agriculture. Next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so, hindi ko, I'm having really, I'm seeing myself sa the screen and, uh, and I'm also looking at the YouTube. Yung... Perfect na to, bro. Perfect na ba yung next? Yes. Okay, bro. So, uh, ayun lang. So, yun yung, um, yun naman yung part ng presentation about why, um, bakit, bakit kailangan kayong pumasok sa agriculture and para mas kumbinsihin pa kayo or para mas matulungan kayong kumbinsihin pa yung mga estudyante ninyo, um, eto naman si Jim para sa kanyang perfect agriculture. Jim, Alright, thank you, Dax. So, um, hindi po namin ini-endorse yung isang um, vitamin and minerals dito sa, sa picture na yan. <laughs> uh, what, we're, what we're just showing is that what spectrum of agriculture are you part of? Uh, so, And what we're trying to say here is agriculture is perfect. And perfect stands for a uh, certain number of things. And what the, the, the idea behind perfect is that just to also give credit to where it is due, this is a concept that was developed by my friend from South Africa, uh, Dr. Hilami Nguenia, and we've worked together with some um, initiatives at the Global Forum for Rural Advisory Services, or GFRAS, uh, and we've also worked together uh, at the UN Community World, World Food Security. So, the perfect agriculture basically stands for the following. P stands for policy, E is for education or the academe, R is for research, F is for both farming and finance, E is for extension, C for communication, and T is for technology and trade. So when we think about agriculture, most of the time when we try to communicate even to the younger generation, uh, iisipin nila agad na farming lang ang agriculture. But the reality is, it's this whole spectrum. No? The policy space uh, creates the environment for agriculture to work or at least to run. So, uh, may balita tayo kahapon na there was, a, there was the amendment of the Organic Agriculture Act. So, yung mga ganung bagay, it continues to to finance or to push initiatives in agriculture, or at least it creates the enabling environment for agriculture to run in a certain direction. No? Um, for example, meron tayong batas din na Agriculture, Fisheries, and Modernization Act, yung AFMA, uh, noong 1995, if I'm not mistaken, that was also one of the laws that actually created the space for agriculture to be professionalized. No? Uh, na nagkaroon ng licensure in agriculture or something like that. Naka, naka-enhance siya ng pag-professionalize ng agriculture. So, as well as pag-develop ng mga specialized areas for food. So, policy is very crucial. No? I'm going into the, the ones na pala. Okay, so policy, gather data, disseminate information, policy briefs, policy primers, uh, position papers, and then you can also use uh, the, the knowledge products that can influence agricultural policy. So, hindi lang dito uh, sa bullets na to, but even the way we, we can interact with lawmakers, how we put forward na ito yung kailangan ng community in terms of policy. No? Uh, do we need stronger incentives or at least better incentives for young people to venture into agriculture enterprises? That's something that policy could answer. And DA, the Department of Agriculture, uh, recently, or at least within the last year, has 
offered or at least rolled out grants and easy access loans for young people who want to venture into agriculture. So, yung mga ganong types of policies nakakatulong sa pag engganyo sa mga kabataan at sa mga kung sino man ang maging interesado sa agriculture. And I think that's what's crucial about policy. Next is the education and research side of things. So, meron tayong mga uh, research papers, publications, online discussions, we have case studies, and it's important to look at also info dissemination. Uh, later, matatakal din yun ng extension. No? And then online surveys uh, coming from those researchers. But the, the caveat though is the limited access to those only with internet access. Um, so, these things, ang importanteng, ang lagi kong sinasabi, no, uh, and I think when I recently graduated and then sumali, sumabak ako sa inter, yung isang international conference, I said, there, there was a line that I kept on saying, no, or at least I kept on driving at, na we need to research for development. Hindi po siya research and development lang. Um, and and uh, dahil sa role ko rin sa loob ng UPLB as a teaching associate, Sinasabi ko rin sa mga colleagues ko na wag po tayong mag-research for the sake of research na para magka-points tayo to, to be promoted. Kasi it's detrimental to society if we just research without addressing a societal need. So my our advocacy really is that when we do research in agriculture, dapat may ina-address tayong gap. And I think that comes from the the my experience no nung isang course namin sa UPLB na eng to we had to make a library research paper i went to the library and and the topic that i chose was why are filipino farmers poorer than was it thailand or vietnam that i chose now vietnamese farmers no so yung dalawang yun kinompare ko pagtingin ko dun sa references sa library and daming mga theses dissertations about coconut um coconut technologies. Sabi ko, eh doon sa probinsya ng mom ko sa Leyte, may mga coconuts kami. Bakit yung mga farmers doon hindi nakakarating sa kanila tong mga gantong technology? Nag-gather lang siya ng dust sa loob ng library. So, my my advocacy or our advocacy and my encouragement would be to when we do research, let's do research for development talaga na meron tayong ina-address na societal need and let's make sure that we, or at least give our effort na makarating talaga sa kung sino man ang makaka-benefit doon sa uh, pinag-research natin. Kasi we're given the, the talents and the skills for the benefit of others as well. Okay. So, yung mga researchers, may mga space sila no, to, to interact. So, academia.edu. Uh, ito, isang research tool. Ito, uh, kung sino yung interested din po sa inyo, Iris.ai is an inter artificial intelligence platform. Pag nag-copy-paste kayo ng isang uh, journal article, ipipaste nyo dito sa platform na to, ang gagawin ni Iris.ai is uh, magsispread siya ng search across the internet ng related uh, articles and related papers. No? So, kumbaga magkakaroon ka ng map of different journal articles related to the journal article that you copy-pasted into, the, into their link. Uh, at least into their form. And then there's also a research gate, which is an interaction uh, or an interactive social platform for researchers. Okay, so we talk about also finance being important in agriculture. And and the, the trend now is that there are crowdfunding platforms. But in, in also, in, in essence, finance is also uh, crucial in terms of credit and I think nagka, naka tie in din dito yung insurance na side. So we also tackle that if you check in our recent webinar sa Dream Agritech, meron kaming in-invite to speak on agricultural insurance in the Philippines. So very closely connected din ang insurance kasi this is one way for us to also help the farmers and those who are tilling lands uh, make sure na kung natamaan man sila ng calamity, there is a, a, a backup for the losses that they incurred no so finance and credit and insurance is very crucial in in agriculture so along that of course we already have uh, uh ito yung mga example ng mga crowdfunding platforms 
for the benefit of everybody, yung crowdfunding basically is a platform. Let's say, for example, Capital. Tignan nyo po yung Capital. Capital is based in the Philippines. Uh, and what they do is they have partner farms na kumbaga nakalagay sa website nila and then people who want to invest into the farm can actually uh, signify their interest and then put in money. And I think, I haven't tried it yet with Capital. I tried it with another platform back then. But I would, from my understanding is there is a specific percentage that is uh, somehow given back as a return on investment. Uh, so yun, parang ganun yung, ano, yung setup ng mga crowdfunding. Okay, so we said far agriculture is not just farming, but farming is still crucial, no? Kasi walang, walang kakain, walang, wala tayong makakain if we're not producing food. So farming is still very crucial. And if you look at what, uh, what the, the UN would highlight, 70% to 80% of the food being produced in the world is actually produced by smallholder farmers. Ibig sabihin, sa konteksto natin sa Pilipinas, ang mga nagproproduce talaga ng pagkain para sa bansa ay yung mga taong may almost 0.5 to 1 hectares lang of land to farm. No? So it's not, it's not the big farms, it's, not the, ano, it's mostly supplied by the small farmers, the smallholder farmers. So farming is still very crucial. On the aspect of farming, kailangan natin ma-develop yung capacity building at skills development. It's not just online courses and webinars. It's also the hands-on training. But now we need to consider also the new normal. Paano natin uh, i-develop pa rin ang skills at capacity ng mga tao sa farm given the new normal. So that's something to consider. Uh, it's important for us to stay up to date with the new ways of farming. And also look at farming movements. Kasi especially now, during the lockdown, Ang daming na ingan yung magtanim ng mag-container gardening, mag-backyard mag gardening. Uh, Nagbibiraan nga kami ni Dax, no? kasi uh, si Dax may tanim sa backyard niya. Ako, sabi ko, sige, mag-container din ako, tapos may backyard uh, garden ako. Sabi ko, uh, tinatest ko tang talaga kung uh, valid ba tong license na meron ako na agriculturist ako. <laughs> so, parang tinatest ko lang talaga na ano, may, may natutunan kaya talaga ako. May na-retain ba sa inaaral ko na. But, buti naman, nag-grow naman. No? So, it's very fun to actually see that na madaming friends, madami rin akong friends online na nagpapakita na even if hindi agriculture background nila, nagtatanim sila sa backyard nila given the the context of the of the pandemic. No? So, I think that's something to consider also. Yun. So, ito ang mga isang mga friends namin na may mga tumutulong din sa pagbuo ng ano, ng pag pag farm ng back sa backyard so may mga hydroponic systems uh, like this and may urban agriculture na mga movement so ito ito yung mga Facebook page nila na nag-advocate din sila for that okay so importante din yung uh, pagtingin natin sa the use of technologies that would improve farm development no and one of the things that we use is drones no uh, for smart agriculture and precision farming or precision agriculture drones are useful now uh, in in terms of assessing the land uh, makikita natin yung saan banda uh, nag nagkukulang ng, ng nutrients or ng water kung nasaan may heat stress or kung nasaan may uh, nagkukulang ng nitrogen so makikita siya sa sa pagpalipad ng drone at ginagawa na kinukuhanan ng uh, special type of camera yung yung farm uh, we we normally call it multi spectral camera and then ang ang lumalabas na na indicator is your ndvi or your normalized difference uh, normalized differential vegetation index ndvi so doon makikita mo kung saan banda sa farm merong nagkukulang ng water or ng nitrogen so this is one way for us to also combat climate change. Bakit? Kasi hindi na natin uh, binobombard yung isang farm ng blanket application of fertilizers. No? So, it's what we call site-specific nutrient management na ang ginagawa. So, nagpapalipad tayo ng drone, makikita natin kung saan banda lang ang nagkukulang ng nitrogen, dun lang din natin ginagawa ng intervention para uh, hindi pinasabog na uh, pina, pinapakalat yung nitrogen na hindi uh, hindi siya kailangan dun sa ibang parts ng farm. 
So we actually reduce the impact on the environment to some degree when we use, or at least when we practice, uh, precision farming. The challenge, though, is the cost, uh, cost return analysis. Because uh, sa part na yun, it, it makes more sense if you are managing a huge farm. Because the use of the drone would would be the, the spread. Um, yung cost ng paggamit ng drone nasis spread siya all throughout the farm. Because if you're using it in a small area, uh, na, na, na hindi mo mama maximize yung economies of scale. So other types of um, ways for us to also develop. So Dream Agritech, uh, one of the first webinars that we held last April was this one. Uh, and we talked about, Dax talked about farm record keeping as a crucial part of, of farming, uh, virtual tours as a use, as an aid in farm planning na uh, Shinerko from my business na 360PH also, na gumagawa tayo ng mga virtual tours para makatulong sa pag-farm plan and then si yung kasama na, namin si Justin Interno si Bard uh, nag-share din siya about how vlogging can also help in agriculture extension so that leads me to the next point which is extension and advisory services na it's a two-way knowledge tech transfer between practitioners and knowledge generating um, institutions and i emphasize on two-way knowledge because the old way of looking at it is ang mga nasa research at academic institution lamang ang may karapatan mag-generate ng knowledge. That was the old way of looking at it. Now, we need to also understand that farmers in their own way are scientists themselves because they interact daily with the environment. They try out new things. So they are in their own rights, scientists themselves. So kaya in-emphasize po natin na extension is two-way kasi ang academic at ang research institutions kailangan din matuto from the farmers kung ano yung ginagawa nila in the fields. No? Vlogging is a way of extension and I think that's something for us to look into na, um, for example, paano natin ma-encourage ang mga young people? Uh, if you look at the trend in social media, more and more young people are consuming content that are video content. No? Uh, kung nagsuscroll ka ng Facebook feed mo, mas titigil ka normally for a one to three minute type of video. So if you can con con uh, encapsulate your message within that time frame, you actually get the attention of of a number of people already. No? So well, vlogging is one way for us to also communicate uh, technologies or interesting stories, narratives that can encourage and uh, transfer technologies in agriculture. So ito yung sinasabi ko po si Hilami na gumawa po nitong uh, perfect agriculture na concept. Ito po ay kasama ko dito sa Global Forum for Rural Advisory Services. Si Hilami din, isa siya sa mga nag-spearhead nitong new extensionist learning kit. Um, if you are interested, you can search for this uh, on Google. Search for GFRAS uh, on Google and you can look for a new extensionist learning kit. This is free. You can access it for free and I think from what I understand, you can also take it as an online course and you can get a certificate. So for those who may be interested uh, in, in agriculture extension, this is one way also for you to up your game. Okay, malapit na tayo na. So sa communications, um, information education, communication materials, very important siya. Vlogging it was a part of extension, but it's also part of communications. Uh, itong mga gandang platform na, that, that Phil Sci-Hub is also putting out, itong webinars, and thank you to Phil Sci-Hub for, for creating this kind of platform on social media where they can actually allow for communications of, of knowledge transfer. So uh, blogging and microblogging are also ways. Uh, if you want to know the difference, basically, of blogging and microblogging, blogging would be more of your uh, the traditional type of blogging na nagsusulat ka, may, may sinusulat ng blog, and then you share it. The microblogging are the shorter blogs which is your instagram captions your twitter those are your micro blog platforms okay so ito si agrilenial isa siya sa mga uh, mga kabataan na nagbe-venture na rin into uh, vlogging so si Reden Costales no ng Mahaihai Laguna uh, meron ito si ito si Filipina farmer if you I'm, I'm sure most of you are also familiar si Cherry Atiliano ng Agrea PH nag nag-initiate din sila ng move food initiative uh, which help farmers move their food during the lockdown 
And yung kasama namin si Bards Interno, si Justin Interno ay, ay gumawa din ng vlogging na dahil sa, ex, sa major niya na agriculture extension, dinadala niya sa social media yung capacity niya and skills niya in agriculture extension gamit yung uh, itong uh, platform na to. Yung buhoy, kahoy, yun yung sinasabi niya. So <laughs> si Bards Interno yun. Uh. And then we also have a friend na na-interview din namin sa isang talk show namin, si Millennial Bookie Girl or si Princess Marcos. Isa siyang industrial engineer by training sa UP Diliman. Pero nagbe-venture na rin siya into agriculture. So interesting yung mga kwento ng mga kabataan. Kung paano sila nakarating sa agriculture. Kasi kumbaga nagdodraw lahat ng kabataan na everybody needs to eat. And so somehow they also want to help society in in the efforts to to change the mindset towards agriculture and you know before i go to the last point of perfect no nakaka encourage lang din na when we started the advocacy of white part uh, here in the philippines in 2015 sobrang almost zero ang usapan ng youth in agriculture or even parang Nandun pa yung stigma na, ah, bata ka, wala kang masasabi dito sa forum na to. May mga ganong, hindi siya nasabi, hindi siya explicitly said, but you can feel it in the environment. But now the, cha- the times have changed and this is the right time for us to really advocate for young people. Kasi yung enabling environment na sinasabi natin, it's already working towards the favor of the young people and making the environment very right for young people to go into agriculture. So nakaka-encourage na, Ganun na ang, in, ang environment ngayon. Okay, so sa communications, meron tayong WhatsApp, meron ng Viber, may Kumu. Sa mga hindi po nakakilala, yung Kumu ay live streaming platform po dito sa Pilipinas na sikat. So uh, si Dax, meron siyang ibang channel dyan sa Kumu na ginagawa nila no, yung outsiders na sports related yun. Pero live streaming platform itong Kumu. <clears throat> If you see this uh, white box uh, below at the lower left it's all these types of different uh, messaging platforms you have slack on the first top whatsapp uh, messenger wechat telegram skype i don't know what the grapes are i don't know what this flower is basta ang alam ko yung last sa baba ay discord na ginagamit ng mga kabataan for gaming pero recently nalaman ko lang na merong isang advocacy group na nagbuo ng Discord and it's interesting because they're they're holding their educational discussions related to advocacies dun sa Discord na platform na kung saan supposedly gaming ginagamit na rin siya to communicate with others who are like-minded to share their advocacy. So pwede nyo i, i ano po i, i how do you say this? Check out. No? <laughs> Or at least tingnan nyo. Okay. Now, T, technology and trade. Tech development, used application, trading of agri-goods and services, agripreneurship. So, ito, very important siya. And I, I already mentioned a part of it now, which was yung drones, uh, yung, yung paggamit ng precision farming, my sensor. So, you know, even in UPLB, we, there, there's, a, there's a group that's behind the, one of the biggest uh, DOS, DOST projects called Sarai, yung Smarter Applications to reinvigorate agriculture as an industry, Sarai, S-A-R-I, S-A-R-A-I, yeah, Project Sarai, uh, yung nangunguna po sa, sa study on the use of sensors in the fields of agriculture, at least in the fields, in the farm fields, ay applied physicist po siya by training. So ginagamit niya yung knowledge niya in physics to work on the sensors that can help assess the farm fields better. So, in collaborative ang agriculture. Sobrang nakakatuwa kasi doon sa Project Saray, merong ComSci, merong Applied Physics, merong Soil Scientist, may GIS people. So, it's a very collaborative uh, industry and anybody who has an interest in helping out food with food security, pwedeng-pwede talaga pumasok sa agriculture. So, Trading of agri-goods and services, that's a staple uh, business model in agriculture. Yung pag-move ng food, yung pag-trade ng food, uh, yung pag-move ng supplies, yun yung mga uh, nasa staple yun sa agriculture. 
So some examples, Move Food Initiative, yung sinabi ko regarding uh, from Cherry Atiliano. Uh, AgriBlocks is a company that I created with IT partners uh, to to use blockchain sir uh, blockchain for the for the agricultural value chain services. Uh, Go Eden, ito yung isa sa mga uh, groups din na kasama kami ni Dax towards uh, pushing for the the movement of agricultural supplies for the for the industry, no. So pwedeng para siyang you can buy your supplies online. Uh, uh, kung ano yun, Dax? Order from your farm without leaving your farm. Yung mga, parang ganyan yung, yung, yung peg no? yung go Eden. <laughs> okay, so next uh, is yun. Dax, okay. So what are the fruits of our labor? So nakita fruits na natin ang perfect. Nakita na natin <laughs> ang spectrum Ano na ang naging impact ng agriculture sa atin? Alright. Sa buhay natin. Okay. Sa buhay natin. So, okay. Uh, so, wait. Is this the first slide? Okay. So, sorry. I'm I'm monitoring this. I'm monitoring the slides via the YouTube stream because I, I can't see it via Zoom. So, I'm looking at it now. And um, these are two opportunities no, that I was given to talk about agriculture. No. So. Uh, the first one on your top left, um, we were, kami ni Jim actually, na-interview kami para sa isang talk show uh, hosted by the UP um, Los Baños um, Development Communication um, College, the CBC. So we were um, asked to talk about uh, Dream Agritech and the importance of uh, involving the youth in agriculture. No? So this is one fruit of our, I consider this a fruit of my labor or fruit of our labor, because uh, we previously we we didn't have these types of platforms. We we weren't able to to share um our passion for agriculture in such a way. Uh, dati Facebook posts lang, Twitter lang, but now uh, we we have these platforms and we have also Phil Sci Hub to thank. Um, I think this I can count this as a fruit of um, of our labor as well, because. Um, if not for for Philsci Hub, we will not have a, a platform to, to engage with you guys. Yung mga nandito ngayon sa Zoom and uh, yung mga nanonood sa YouTube. And we are very grateful. And yung pangalawa naman, um, I was able to talk to students no, by, uh, hosted by Circa or the Southeast Asian uh, Graduate Research. Ayan, I forgot again. <laughs> Regional Center for... <laughs> Regional Center for Agriculture. Ayan. So, um, so I was invited by Sir, hello po, uh, Sir Dr. Glenn. Um, so we were invited by Sir uh, to talk, uh, to, to, to encourage um, bright um, high school students to get into agriculture. So basically, it's the same thing that I discussed with you. We or we discussed with you today. Yun yung naging topic ng talk na yon. And I, I am, I'm wearing the same shirt. So yeah, <laughs> next slide, please. Okay, so I'm, I'm waiting for the slide um, to come on uh, YouTube. Sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. All right, all right. Wait lang. Hindi na kita yung ibang ano. Yung previous slides yata, wala? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Okay, here. okay, so as Jim tries to pull up the, the slides, you know, so I have been blessed uh, to see the world as well uh, during, during my time as an agriculturist to see una -una the Philippines. You know, when I was a enterprise development director, I was able to travel um, up from Ilocos Norte down to Surigao. So we talaga namin the Philippines because we were doing um, farming seminars for our um, Filipino farmer. So, naikot ko lahat yan. I never ko na-imagine na maglalakad ako sa gitna ng pilapil, sa ilo-ilo, or maglalakad ako sa, sa tabi ng tubigan, sa may uh, Surigao. Nung nasa, nung nasa UP ako, nung nasa LB ako, never sumagi sa isip ko yon na mapupunta ako dun sa mga lugar na yon or makikita ko yung mga tao or mamimit ko yung mga tao na nandun. And I'm, I'm very honored and I'm very blessed ano, to, 
to have experienced that as an agriculturist because I got to travel, I got to see the Philippines, um, and especially a side of the Philippines that people wouldn't normally see because hindi naman siya tourist tourist spots. These are not your tourist spots na maraming pumupunta. But then I'm um, these um, these spots are also beautiful in their own right. Because yung konti lang ang nakakakita. And um, I remember, I distinctly remember standing in the middle of a field somewhere in, in Iloilo. And uh, may bundok dito sa left ko. And then, napapalibutan kami ng bundok. Eh, meron din bundok sa right ko. So, napakaganda. Alam niyo yung, yung dinodrawing natin ng mga estudyante tayo, isa, yung mga kinder pa tayo or preschool, yung, yung merong bundok, tapos meron pala yan sa baba, and then sumisilip yung araw dun sa gitna. Yung mga, mga unang... Uh, basic drawings that tinuturo sa atin as we were kids. So I got to see that in person. So that is <laughs> that is just um, one of the fruits of our labor. And of course, yung, um, I was also able to see the world. Um, the first time that we met, uh, Jim and I, nagmeet kami sa isang conference sa uh, Bangkok, Thailand. And um, without agriculture, I wouldn't have been able to go to, to a conference like that and to to meet people like that ano marami din kaming na meet na mga international people people from every country na involved sa agriculture ayan so okay so ito ito yung unang slide um yung slide sa right this was my time during uh, i was an enterprise development director then so this was in Visaya State University in Leyte so hindi ko alam na makakapunta ako doon so uh, i always um uh, made it a point to take photos of of, uh, of our trips. And then sa baba naman, uh, we were invited by UP Baguio to talk about agriculture then. So uh, like I said, you know, we, 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 we were in, um, in a conference, Jim and I, back in 2015. And that uh, there was a podium in that, in that conference. Dati nagpapanggap lang kami na, okay, balang araw, kami na magiging speaker dito. <laughs> balang araw, kami na ang nasa podium. Tapos, ayun, nagkatotoo siya. Okay, next slide, please. So, ito. Um, this, was, um, this was taken just last year, last October in Taiwan. Um, I was able to attend a, an agriculture show, uh, trade show, which involved um, the latest and greatest technologies in agriculture. No? So, hindi ko alam na pwede mo na palang i-monitor yung farm mo gamit lang yung Wi-Fi router mo monitor mo na yung kung gaano kabasa yung soil mo or kung ano yung pH ng soil mo remotely and meron ng app for that and matatrack mo na rin yung mga baka mo using an app matatrack mo kung in heat ba sila or um yung technical term to use a technical term no estrus or ready for reproduction through an app through a computer so nagulat ako um ika nga sa isang Disney um uh, borrowing from a Disney quote ano it's a it was a whole new world for me <laughs> Kasi, uh, grabe, uh, sobrang yung mga technologies na nababasa ko lang dati, yung mga technologies na nakikita ko lang via articles, it was there. It was there for me to personally touch, to personally handle. And I wouldn't have gotten to experience that. I wouldn't also have gotten to experience Taiwan if wala ako sa agriculture. Um, next slide, please. So yung kasama ko pala dyan, isa din namin dating kasama sa, sa Dream Agritech, si Benny. And he works now for the International Rice Research Institute. Okay, so um, I think uh, meron pang ibang slides na hindi nakita. But I was also um, been able, fortunate enough to, be, to have been invited no, to represent the Philippines uh, sa Middle East. Uh, there was a trade show in, held in the United Arab Emirates and um, Dream Agritech was invited and I wouldn't have gotten to see the Middle East as well uh, previously to that, um, if not for agriculture. And um, I'm very thankful for the opportunities that I have had to be able to represent the country. So that's another big thing for me. Uh, I'm very nationalistic. And yung, yung fact lang na nare-represent mo yung bayan mo sa isang international arena, um, ito side trivia lang kasi dati pangarap ko maging basketball player. Eh. So in-imagine ko dati, represent ko yung Philippines sa Olympics, sa, sa mga ganyan tournament. But um, hindi ako pinagpala dun sa field na yun. But then, yung pangarap ko na ma-represent yung Philippines sa international field, natupad pa rin because of agriculture. So I would just like to emphasize that. Um, it, was, it is because of agriculture. Um, 
And then, um, of course, my one of my greatest rewards is being able to interact with um, our farmers. Ito yun, ito yung slide na yan. Um, uh, uh, tuturo tayo sa disyerto. So, um, one of the greatest rewards that um, I can also say that I have had you know, during my career is to be able to talk to farmers. Um, ito, ito sila. Uh, uh, on, the, on the left side, these are the farmers of Pake Laguna. And uh, on the right, we are talking to the Philippines chief farmer or the head farmer of the Philippines. Ang boss farmer ng Pilipinas, si Dr. William Dar. And sa baba naman, yan yung picture ng aking mentor sa uh, nung, nung nag-OJT ako. Uh, which is... Uh, so, ayun ano, being able to interact with these people, I got to realize na, and one of the reasons I fell in love with agriculture is these are some of the, yung pinakatotoong tao na makikilala mo. Kung ayaw nila sa'yo, sabihin nila sa'yo sa harap mo. Kung gusto ka nila, yayakapin ka nila na parang pamilya. And yun yung nagustuhan ko kasi... Uh, hindi ko kinailangan kumbaga hindi ko kinailangan pumorma hindi ko kinailangan magbihis na maganda para lang tanggapin nila ako tinanggap nila ako dahil meron na akong kayang ihatid sa kanila which is yung knowledge na meron kami from the fields ay from the labs and from the schools from the classrooms na dinala namin and pinaghalo namin sa knowledge na meron naman sila from the fields and i think that is one of the greatest fruits of labor that i can consider for for myself during this career na no? yung yung nakakatulong ka sa mga farmers, nakikita mo, na na-appreciate nila yung tulong na nagmumula sa'yo. Um, that is one great, one of the greatest fruits of labor that I have. And um, I think Jim can share some of his own as well. Yeah, so thanks, Dax. No? Um, <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> ito, yung pictures na nandito ay compilation sa galing sa isang uh, presentation ko, but Hindi na, hindi na pasama pala dito yung 2014 at 2013 ko na kung saan uh, nakababad ako sa isang farming community sa Cebu, sa Bundok, uh, sa Mantalongon, Dalaget. And parang may nakita ako dito sa chat kanina, may nagsabi na taga Cebu. So, may yung adlaw dira ninyo, uh, mga kabisayaan. Uh, so, doon ako nag-practicum nag, nag slash thesis nung ano, nag-value chain analysis po tayo dun sa bundok ng Mantalungon Dalaget. In one month, nakababad ako dun sa, sa farming community. You know? And same, same as with Dax, no, na parang masasabi ko talaga na rewarding siya na pwede mong makita kung saan nakakarating yung, yung, yung pagtulong mo sa kanila. At pag, pag ano, sinasabihan mo na, Sir, pwede po, uh, kuya, pwede pong gantong gawin para mas ma-minimize po yung uh, exposure nyo sa chemicals, tamang gano, tamang gamit ng dosage, tamang pag-practice nito. And then, ah, talaga, ganun ba ito? Matagal na namin ginagawa ito. Eh, kasi ito yung tinuro ng lolo at lola ko, oh, ganyan, ganyan. So, in the same way, maraming din nagtuturo na nagsasabi na ito yung tinuro or pinas down ng, ng parents or lolo nila na hindi rin alam ng ng academe at ang at ng uh, research institutions yung mga natutunan from the community no? so anyway i was there and i think i owe huge thanks also to the farmers for helping understand better the interaction of the pricing the marketing and the production the value chain analysis so ito naman same as with dax yung pa uh, after nag-meet kami sa Thailand, parang doon na yun, yung nagjo-joke kami na nasa podium kami, nag, nagpi-picture. Oh, ako naman, picturean mo naman ako, ganyan. Joke time lang yun dati. Tapos parang biglang nagkatotoo no, na uh, I, I got to fly to China in 2015 na uh, hindi pa po sumabog ang kung anumang meron doon ngayon. Uh, and then, <laughs> yung, yung itong pandemic ko, buti na lang po. And uh, Australia, I was in in Australia for 2017 to speak to GFRAS. Itong 2016 was probably, I could say, one of the most uh, memorable milestones or highlights of my um, international policy advocacy. Um, ano po? Kasi this, this was during the third global conference on agriculture research for development or also called GCARD3. And ako po yung naging keynote speaker on how to engage youth uh, for for the field of agriculture. And what we presented was yung five-fold strategy po ng YPARD na pwede pumasok ang, agri ang mga kabataan 
sa academe research extension policy at business na kung saan ngayon ay naging refined at ito na po yung pinisent namin sa inyo na perfect agriculture. Ayun po. And then, I also got to interact with GFRAS again in Korea. And then, noong 2018 po, I was uh, blessed to actually be invited to go to the United Nations uh, Committee on World Food Security annual meeting sa Rome. No? And that's also where my, parang kumbaga, that's where that's where my engagement with the United Nations food agencies also started uh, in that trip in 2018. Na san ngayon po ay tayo po ang nagsaserve as the focal person for YPART Global to the Youth Alliance for Zero Hunger discussions and negotiations para sa pag-usap with the UN food agencies. So yun, noong 2019, na-invite po ako uh, to speak in a panel discussion in the same venue in the, in the same conference na kung saan nauna po mag-speak si Pope Francis, uh, yun, nakakilabot, no, na parang, wow, nakashare ako ng stage na hindi, sa, hindi naman simultaneously, pero at least in the same conference na, na gano'n, nakasama si Pope Francis. Man. So yun, naka, uh, itong nasa lower right naman po, uh, you could see that that was also uh, the company that I mentioned that we also created to use blockchain for agriculture na may IT partners po tayo dun. And uh, this one is on how uh, this is a business that I started na binanggit ko na we also, I also shared in the first webinar that Dream Agritech held. Uh, 360 PH is a business that would create virtual tours and isa sa mga ina-advocate ko sa mga kakilala kong researchers, academicians at mga negosyante na nasa farming ay magagamit po ang virtual tour especially now sa new normal po na hindi lahat agad-agad makakapunta sa isang farm or farm tourism site. So ang virtual tour po pwedeng magbigay ng glimpse at ng immersive experience sa pag uh, sa isang farm tourism site. Ayun po. So with that, I think yung call to action na lang po namin ni Dax. Um Dax, do you have any <laughs> Ah, okay, so do you go, siguro do you proceed or ako or ikaw ano ang trip mo? Ako, hindi, siguro isa, um, I'll, I'll give my call to action and then you give yours. Parang um, take turns tayo. Ta okay lang ba, bro? Sige. Go lang. Okay, so so for me, um, I think one of my calls to action is is that yung gusto ko lang emphasize yung importance ng ng food. And ngayon, um, during this pandemic, we 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 it has been given a magnified um, presence or magnified look lalo na no nakita natin kung gaano kahirap makakuha ng pagkain especially during uh, times na merong shortage and during may times na may calamity such as this one and i think now people appreciate more uh, yung backstage ng agriculture nakikita nila kung gaano kahirap makarating mula doon sa field papunta sa plato nila sa yung sa pagkainan nila yung yung food and if you want to convince your students, if you want to convince yourselves, why should I get into agriculture? Well, like I said earlier in the, in the webinar, no? um, agriculture and food will never go out of style. Agriculture will always be needed by society. And agriculture is a life skill that one should have in order to prosper and survive. So um, I think that is one of the ways we can convince these people um, our students and ourselves to go, to get into agriculture. Uh, Jim, would you like to add your own uh, thoughts? Yeah, uh, thanks, Dax. So, I think uh, on the side of uh, how do you say this? You, you, on my end, no, to wrap up, I, I would say that the the best way forward is for us to inculcate the the or at least show the value what agriculture can bring to, to the table now, or at least the, the contribution of food security to development. So like what uh, Dax quoted, kasi ito yung isa sa pinapaulit-ulit ko sa conferences, <laughs> food security is national security. Um, at bakit ko sinasabi yun? Kasi we've seen over history, in, in, uh, all throughout history, that most of the riots, most of the revolutions, if not, has always stemmed from uh, hunger, poverty, 
uh, or inequality in terms of ano na. So, laging doon nagre-revolve. Societal issue siya. And food security in in one way or another can address and has a multiplier effect in terms of addressing hunger, poverty, and inequalities. Kasi na, napapataas din natin, napapataas natin yung incomes, uh, napapataas natin ang resilience ng mga farming communities when we engage and when we make them climate smart, if you call it that, naging resilient. So, the best way forward, I think, is always to convince the next generation and let them see the value na perfect po ang agriculture, na meron pong future at perfect po yung future ng agriculture. Kasi like what Dax is saying, it will never go out of style. Na kahit anumang field tayo or anumang profession natin, my dad is in real estate, pero ngayon na nasa COVID, uh, nagba-backyard farming siya. You know? And natuto siya sa isang webinar namin, in-apply niya yun nagpa farm siya natutuwa siya so i think everybody needs to eat at the end of the day uh, and everybody can can benefit a lot from agriculture so my encouragement is uh, let's have a change in our mindset let's have a new perspective towards agriculture it's not only farming magtanim ay hindi biro but because of perfect agriculture maging masaya na ang pag farm all right <laughs> <laughs> thank you, but thank you. Again, thank you, uh, thank thank you, you Dax and Jim, for that uh, talk. Uh, maraming questions na uh, nagpapap up sa Zoom and sa YouTube, so I guess you can answer some of these questions. Uh, All right. shout, out, shout out lang kay Moises Von Rosauro de Gracia, kasi nag-comment siya sa Zoom na sila daw ay family of agriculturists from Tita and Tito, wow. and Mother. And all of them are graduate of the CLSU, one of the leading agriculture uh, universities here in the Philippines. Meron siyang nice. tanong eh. Can you, uh, can you have uh, tips on how to engage younger generation to agriculture? Kung paano sila pwedeng isama sa bukid and pagtatanim para ipakita or uh, ang importance ng agriculture sa kanila. So can you have some tips kung paano kayo uh, mm. na-engage in agriculture? Uh, Jim, paunahin naman muna kita. Okay, sige, sige. <laughs> so, um, for me, w- one of the best ways, no, I mean, nakikita ko lang, kasi ako, yung hilig ko is uh, into uh, drones. And uh, normally, pag <laughs> nagpapalipad ka kasi uh, sa isang lugar, ang daming mga batang lumalapit, na interested sila sa, ano, mm-hmm. sa, sa drone and all that. So I think isa sa mga ways to encourage young people is the use of technology sa ngayon and yung how do we how do we uh, stir up the minds of the young people towards the use of technology. So una yung drones, yung use of internet communications based um, technologies, yung use ng uh, apps, yung use ng mga robots uh, it, for the benefit of everybody also on, in the call or the webinar, uh, there, there are universities, like one is in Sydney, Australia, where they've already dis- developed uh, technologies using robots that could work in the farms 24-7. And, in, and I'm, I hope it doesn't become a trend na ma-displace lalo ang farmers, but it's to complement and to enhance also the farming production side of things. So, Parang feeling ko matutuwa ang mga bata sa mga ganun. And I think those are things that we need to also take advantage of. Kasi yun ang opportunity natin sa panahon ito. Panahon na to. Okay, I think sapat na yun. <laughs> okay. So I, I, I guess uh, more on uh, hands-on siguro kung talagang gusto nyo mm, yes. appreciate. Oh. Kapag wala ka talagang experience on the field, hindi mo talaga siya may experience. And I myself, yeah, I'm a chemist by profession, pero ngayon naka-employ ako sa Institute of Plant Breeding. So first time ko rin talagang naka-experience na pumunta sa field, mag-collect ng mga germplasm, <laughs> nakunta rin ako sa Visca, nagpunta rin ako sa Baguio dahil sa opportunities ng agriculture. So 
medyo pinagsisisihan ko na hindi ko siya kinuhang MS. Parang <laughs> dapat na nag-agriculture na ako or ag-chem nung MS ko. Kasi ang dami ta- kasi hindi mawawala ng opportunity sa agriculture. Yun yung nakita ko sa sa pagtatrabaho ko ngayon sa pakikipag-usap sa mga agriculturist, sa mga farmers, kay sa mga researchers. Ang daming field na pwedeng pasukan. And yung mga field na to, hindi siya agad na sa saturate. Kumbaga sinabi nga ni Jim kanina, uh, merong mga katulad ng agricultural systems na wala namang masyadong kumukuha. So hindi ka masasaturate yung mga agricultural system specialist sa mga fields na pinapasukan nila. So maraming opportunities. Uh, meron tayong isang viewer, I think, from YouTube ata. Student siya, ta sabi niya, gusto daw niyang kunin ng agriculture sa college. Hey. Shout out. Yeah, her name is Lorraine. Uh, yeah, shout out kay Lorraine. Hello. Hi, Lorraine. Uh, meron pang isang question here. Uh, gusto niyang mal- uh, this is from uh, Princess Yvonne Donila. What are the implemented policies or laws to strengthen the agriculture in the country and are these laws strictly implemented? Uh, ano kaya yung mga policies na nagpo-protect sa agriculture in general and also mm-hmm. for the sector to grow? Uh, okay. Yun siguro gusto niyang malaman. Okay, um Jim, I'll take this one ano. So I think um, recently, meron tayong mga meron tayong mga programs from the Department of Agriculture na may kita natin na focusing on enhancing the capability of Filipinos, especially uh, the youth, to go into agriculture. But let me just mention some laws ano, that are related to this. So meron tayong RA 8435. Uh, I think this is the AFMA, and then meron din tayong RA 10,000 which is the amendment to the the CARP. And doon sa RA 8435, kung hindi nyo nalalaman, um, merong um, section doon na um, graduates of agriculture can take a loan and um, they can access that loan to go into agribusiness. So kahit ako nung pagka-graduate ko, and I think kahit si Jim nung pagka-graduate niya, or I think mas alam niya, mas alam niya yun. Pa- pa- parang... I think he was able to approach um, one of our banks. And I think, um, but yes, it is there. Merong, um, merong laws that, um, that encourage actually um, the youth to go into agriculture. And then, um, yun nga, yung mga, yung mga ating mga latest developments or mga latest programs ni, ni DA, which is the Expanded Sure Aid and Recovery Project. Um, capital Access for Young Agripreneurs, which is um, shortened into KAYA. And yung agri negosyo Anyo or so these are um, um, for S- MSCs or micro and small enterprises, um, small fishers and farmers, young agripreneurs. Um, you can also avail of a micro agri negotiation loan and a small agri negotiation loan, which is um, which is a wide range of amount. So um, I think dito palang meron na tayong mga um, encouraging things that we can see from the government ano na, na we can um, get or tap into. Tapos meron din tayong, um, I think we discussed this during our last webinar naman sa Dream Agri Media, which is yung agricultural insurance or the, um, which is offered now for free para dun sa mga registered sa ating RSBSA system. Uh, Jim, can you, um, ano nga ulit yung RSBSA? Um, if, you, if you have the info. Uh, what is, yun po what yung is it, San Parn? registry system for basic sectors in agriculture. So ito po yung naging parang database ng lahat ng farmers. Pwede lahat ng farmers and fisher folk ay mag-register po sa RSBSA through their uh, respective municipal agriculture offices or provincial agriculture offices. And then while when they enter into the RSBSA, they can take advantage of the insurance programs of Uh, the DA without any premium, if I remember right, no, na they don't yes. need to cover uh, pay premium para makapag uh, makapag avail ng insurance programs. I think Dax, can I add on also to the policies, no? Um, okay, go ahead. There, there's also the farm tourism law that was passed mga 2016, if I'm not mistaken, or 2017 ba yun, Na the farm tourism law enables the farm tourism sites to also become learning sites. And I think 
one of the enabling policies in that law is that kung ikaw ay isang farm tourism site na naging accredited learning site by either ATI or uh, Agriculture Training Institute ng DA or by TESDA, ay pwede po kayo mag-host ng mga scholars ng TESDA on the site and your farm learn your farm learning site can earn from hosting uh, these scholars that the test that would bring to your farm. And so that that's also become a business model to some extent. Uh, and I think that's something that could be interesting for young people. Kasi uh, um, kung ikaw ay mahilig sa Instagram at gusto mo maging Instagrammable ang, ang iyong farm, ay pwedeng-pwede mo siyang gawing farm tourism and learning site and then then also make money out of it. Okay, thank you uh, sa sagot nyo. Uh, we have uh, a few more questions, pero before ko iba to yung, sec- uh, yung mga nakasulat na question, yung para po sa mga nakazoom, kung gusto nyo pong mag-live question, pwede po nyong i-raise uh, yung hand nyo, may raise your hand option dyan, and then we will acknowledge you after this question. So, uh, this is... Uh, Question: One of the challenges in re, uh, introducing technology to our farmers is that they are not receptive towards new technologies. Some of them, especially the old ones, are more comfortable with the traditional ways of farming. Did you experience uh, experience this challenge? And if yes, how did you address this challenge? Okay. Uh, Ducks go lang. Come on, eh. Okay. So. Uh, yun nga, um, sa kwento ko kanina, I was a researcher then. Uh, that was my first job. And of course, we were required to interact with the uh, farmers. And could to see nga if na-implement ba or nakakaabot ba sa kanila yung mga technology na dinedevelop ng ating mga research institutions or ng mga universities natin, kung umaabot ba sa kanila sa, sa mga farms nila yung mga technology na yun. And um, yes, we have encountered farmers who are very set in their ways. Um, Nung, nung mas bata ako, no, ma, parang hindi ko siya maintindihan na parang bakit, bakit kaya ganito yung mga farmers natin? Bakit parang hindi sila masyadong receptive sa, sa mga bagong technology or mga bagong technique? But uh, as I got older and as I got more experience, I realized na it's because they really cannot take any risks. So hindi sila pwedeng sumugal eh. Um, hindi sila pwede masyadong mag-try ng bagong technology because it would mean a season or two na loss if ever hindi nila ma-implement ng tama. So, I think, um, yun, um, one of the ways that I can ad- address it is to also understand um, what where they're coming from. I think it's a key component din ng communication. Kailangan malaman mo ano ba yung barrier nila, ano ba yung, uh, ano ba yung problem nila or ano yung na- nakakapigil sa kanila para i-absorb yung knowledge na binibigay mo. So, for me, ang analysis ko is yun nga, kasi pag nag-try sila ng bagong technology at this stage na, kumbaga yung technology na ginagamit nila, they've been using it for decades, 10, 20, 30 years. So, proven and tested na yun, tried and true na yun na, pag ginawa ko to, ito ang mangyayari. If I do A, B will happen. So, kumbaga, ano na yun eh? Kumbaga, parang process na siya na set. But then, if you try to introduce, of course, a change into any system, magkakaroon niya ng... ng reaction and i think yun yung yun yung kailangan um, kailangan naman as an agriculturist or as an extension worker yun yung kailangan natin pag-aralan how we can um, learn from our farmers learn from their experiences and then try to work our way into those experiences and then make them see the benefits of the new technology that we bring so i think yun yung isa sa mga ways na ma-address natin yung gap between um, researchers extensionists and yung mga farmers natin. I think on the side also of uh, the farmers, no, giving them the benefit of the doubt. Da- may, may point talaga yung kay Dax na malaki kasi ang possible trade-off in terms of sila ang nag, uh, mag-take or mag-take ng risk to try out a certain new technology uh, and then hindi pala mag-work out. Then yan. And there are research institutions that I've uh, worked and communicated with. Um, let's just keep it that general or broad. Na meron po kasing mga farming communities na base sa cultural context po nila, 
hindi uh, tutugma yung technology na ini-introduce. For example, just just a case, just a case in point no. Um, high yielding rice variety dadalhin sa isang dinala sa isang farming community. Yes, mataas ang yield ng rice, no doubt uh, nagwo-work at nagpe-perform ang rice variety na yon. Pero ang culture ng yung community na yon mahilig sila sa variety na mahaba ang straw ng rice kasi at the end of the harvest period, ginagamit nila ang rice straw para sa isang cultural affair within the community. E itong bagong variety ng rice na pinasok na high yielding, maiksi ang rice straw kasi kinompensate ang iksi ng rice straw dun sa higher yield ng grain ng rice. So, income and yield wise, for the for the academics and the researchers yes maganda pakinggan pakinggan at tingnan na uy mataas ang yield mataas ang income nito for the farming community but because the farming community gives more priority to their cultural practice mas ginusto nila bumalik sila eventually to the old variety kasi ang mas habol nila is may may harvest sila at meron silang mahahabang rice straw na magagamit para sa cultural affair natin nila. So I think in terms of technology, there's a huge part that we need to take into consideration. Yung konteksto ng mga farmers na kung saan natin gusto dalhin ang technologies. And in the same way, in line with what we're talking about, that's why what we're hoping is we want to engage the younger generation. Itong mga anak naman ng farmers. Kasi yes, ang yes. nakikita ng mga anak ng farmers is hindi okay ang buhay ni tatay at ni nanay kasi nasa farming sila. Pero yun kasi ang reality nila. And we cannot change that perception right away because naka-ingrain sa kanila yun. They live in that day-to-day. And I, we don't discredit that reality. What we try to introduce or what, we, what we're hoping for is that we can show this pers- uh, these um, aspects of agriculture and we can link the younger generation right away to saan man ang mga opportunity. So for example, ang 4H Philippines, ang 4H International, uh, nakababad po sila sa mga barabarangay at mga municipality. Yun isang magandang paraan na ma-engage agad ang mga young people sa sa remote areas, sa far-flung areas. Makonect natin sila sa 4H clubs ng Pinas. Buhay pa rin po ang 4H clubs ng Pinas. So they're very much alive and they're very much able to help the young people Uh, be equipped and also learn in agriculture. So yun, I think it's really about exposing them to the opportunities kasi hindi talaga natin ma-discredit yung reality nila and what we're hoping for is ma-change natin ang mindsets ng next generation that they can still engage in agriculture and actually learn, uh, earn from it eventually. Uh, thank you, Jim. Actually, marami nagtatanong about opportunities and how to get capital for farming. Kasi siguro, isa talaga yun sa mga problems ngayon. No? Kahit gustuhin nilang magkaroon ng farms or gusto nilang mag-venture into agriculture, parang hindi masyadong alam ng nakakarami kung saan kukuha ng capital or saan pwedeng mag-loan or saan pwedeng uh, mag-venture na low, low risk pero mas, mas, may magiging advantage sa kanila. Uh, may mga nag ng hand so siguro I'll call one kasi last two questions na tayo for today and then yung iba pong questions lalo na po yung mga policy related na alam ko naman pong hindi ma- magagawa ng paraan ng ating mga speakers ay hindi na po namin <laughs> no, no, mahira po yan let's leave, let's leave it to the congressman and to the legislators para uh, para ma- ma- ma-introduce Apo. yung mga nung, uh, or ma-amend yung mga laws na pinagsasa- pinagsasabi po natin dito or mga tinatanong na gusto po natin magkaroon ng re- re- reforma. So, uh, I-, I think I- I'll call Moises. Are you ready? I'll-, I'll unmute you para makapagtanong ka ng live. Uh, can we please unmute Moises? Ayan. Pwede ka na magsalita, Hello. Moises. Are you here? Oo. Yeah. Ayan. Hello po. Hi. Yes, hello. Hello. Hello, yeah, yeah. Moises. Hello, yes. Ayan. Hello po. Uh, itatanong ko lang sana kung may na-encounter na po ba kayong mga problems sa backyard and organic farming? 
and how did you address it po? Okay. So, Jim, I'll go ahead. Go lang, go lang. So, ang uh, isa sa mga main problem na encounter ko, um, let's um, let's put it in the context of um, this pandemic, ano? lalo na nitong nag-try kami mag-backyard garden ngayon. Um, one of the main problems is yung uh, seeds. Um, it's not um, really accessible um, unless um, you can go to your provincial or municipal agriculturist. So hindi, siya, hindi na siya readily available na nakakabili ka from your agricultural stores because for a time they were closed. So um, that is one problem. And yung isa pa sa importante component ng um, backyard farming is yung growing media or yung mga growing mediums natin. Kasi usually yung mga soils natin sa ating mga homes, um, it's not really that uh, healthy uh, to sustain um, plants. Unless um, you have a huge backyard na meron talagang, um, meron talagang allowance for, for farming, lalo na yung para sa mga nagko-container gardening. So um, yun, yung mga, yun yung mga primary problems na encounter ko, no? yung lack of supplies. And then of course, pangalawa din yung uh, hindi mo control yung uh, weather ngayon. Kasi nung nag-start ako, nag, nagtanim kasi akong pechay, nung nag-start ako magtanim ng pechay, sobrang init. Tapos lately, I think this past couple of weeks, bumabagyo naman. Halos bumagyo na, halos maanod na yung uh, tanim ko. So I think one way we can address that is that, um, uh, yun nga, I always advocate for uh, farm record keeping. Napaka-import natin ang pagkikip ng updated na farm record. So, i-record natin kung kailan umuulan, kung kailan hindi umuulan. Para the next year or the next time we try it, meron na tayong data na pwede natin gamitin. And mapaplano natin yung, yung planting natin using that um, that record. So, yun yung, um, it is a one scientific approach, I think, uh, through observation na ma-streamline ma, ma, ma natin or ma ma Ma, mapapaganda natin yung process ng pagtatanim on our backyard. So, uh, Jim? Yeah. Um, I think in terms of organic and backyard, um, the, the, the challenge, like what Dax is saying, no, una yung inputs. Um, the, the challenge also is, say for example, um, yung policy space. No? And dito ko sinabi na maganda yung pag-amend ngayon netong Organic Agriculture Act kasi meron okay. akong pinapayagan ang batas na tinatawag po nating PGS or also known as Participatory Guarantee System. Ibig sabihin po, ang bawat farmer na naka, may, may standards siya for organic farming ay pwede na po sila mag-guarantee or mag-certify ng ibang farms going through the right process para ma-certify na organic ang isang farm. Kasi po, ang dating batas ng organic agriculture, at least ang dating version ng Organic Agriculture Act was only favoring third-party certifying bodies. Ibig sabihin po, mas mahal po ang uh, pagpa-certify na organic. So, yung mga organic, agri- uh, organic farmers, hindi sila talaga makapagpa-certify kasi umaabot ng 50 to 100,000 per hectare per year ang cost na magpa-certify na per organic crop. at per crop yon so per hectare per crop 100,000 eh doon pa lang sa sa yield at yung pagbenta mo wala na baka break even or even loss na lang yun para sa farmer so hindi lahat nagpapa-certify na organic dahil doon sa barrier na yun so itong bagong amendment ng Organic Agriculture Act very welcome po ito sa mga organic farmers at organic agriculture practitioners natin kasi bababa po ang cost ng pagpa-certify uh, sa organic produce natin. Okay. So, uh, actually, lalong dumadami yung questions habang tumatagal tayo. <laughs> uh, I think we will collect the questions and then I, we will forward it to Jim and Dax. And pwede kayo mag-shoot ng mga answers nyo kasi dumadami talaga yung questions while you're answering the, okay. uh, the, 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 the their questions. So, uh, shout out lang sa ating energetic YouTube commenters. Ang daming nagko-comment sa YouTube actually. Uh, also, uh, for the last question, ano, uh, babanggitin ko lang. This is from uh, 
Jovel Reyes. I, I guess this is also your time to plug your uh, your platforms. May kasunod pa po bang webinar about agriculture? Very interesting <laughs> po and also it can help us sa small business namin sa vegetable farming. Nagsisimula pa lang po kasi kami. Makakatulong makakatulong po mga webinar about agriculture. So I guess this is your time to promote your platform. Uh, Dax uh, and Jim. Oh, Dax, okay. plug na natin. Yung okay, <laughs> sakto yung segue ni Martin. No? Thanks for that, Martin. <laughs> so, ayun, um, we, we have been conducting agricultural webinars on our platform as well. Um, so, we, um, we are on Facebook and on YouTube. So, sa Facebook, we are under Dream Agri Media. So, pakisearch na lang po facebook.com slash dream agri media and then on youtube naman we are under the name dream agri tech services so uh currently uh meron kami dong mga webinars about um container gardening meron din kaming webinars about agricultural insurance permaculture yung farm record keeping 360 tours we also tackled the organic standards so nandun siya lahat and we also have um, can you discuss the other show that we have, uh, bro? Uh, so, yung sinasabi ni Dax, that's the technical shows or the webinar series na tinatawag po namin Agri 2020. So, very similar tama po dito, <laughs> Agri 2020, new perspectives kasi word play siya on 2020 vision. Um, yung other show namin, which is every Wednesday, uh, Dax, nasabi mo ba yung schedule ng Agri 2020? Every ah, Monday yeah. po yun. Every Monday at 3 p.m. Uh, so week, weekly po yun, uh, meron po tayo. So you can tune into a Dream Agri Media Mondays at 3 p.m. Meron po tayong webinars on any field of agriculture. Uh, this coming Monday, I we're going to talk about bioenergy from rice straw. Um, yeah. So Wednesdays po, ay meron po tayong show every 7.30 p.m. na ang tawag po ay Agri Kaba. And ito naman po ay very informal type of talk show na hindi siya technical, ang, ang layunin lang po ng talk show is basically to uncover the stories behind agriculture actors. So, kumbaga, ano yung journey ng mga tao, kung paano sila nakarating sa kung saan sila ngayon in the agriculture space. So, meron po tayong mga magagandang nakaline up po. Uh, we've already had a uh, millennial book girl, we've had the playwright and the uh, musical director of Agra the Musical last night. Um, next week, meron po tayo si Agrilenial, si Reden Costales, nandun po sa show na Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. And then, madami pa po tayong mga national scientists, national academicians uh, na nakapila din po doon. So, abangan nyo rin po yun. Ayan. Thank you sa plugging. So, sina Sir Barba <laughs> Baran, sina Thank Sir uh, AJ Baran. Abangan, abangan. Pila. abangan. Abangan. Okay. Uh, so thank you Dax and Jim for sharing your time. Uh, baka may gustong sabihin si Kuya Jeff before namin kayo i-let go. Hey, uh, maraming maraming salamat sa inyo sa pagbibigay ng oras at ano. Sana ano, sana maulit. Uh, kapag meron kayo. <laughs> if, there, if, there, if, there, if there are contents or if there are materials that you, that you would actually like to share with our teachers and students, you know, just to keep inspiring them and engaging them um, um up to and inspiring them to, to venture into the agricultural area, our platform is always um, 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 your stays. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Uh, yeah, Jim and Dax, maraming salamat sa pagbubukas ng agriculture sa ating yes. mga manonood. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, very welcome po kayo para pumasok sa aming sector. Kailangan po namin ng fresh minds. And Actually, fresh ito, ito. Apo, uh, at ito po yung, yung una na una sa installment namin nung ano na uh, how do i say this like different um iba-ibang elemento sa lupa no sa um agriculture so we also have other groups reaching out to us about uh, what uh, Philippine water system opportunities na mabit din naman siguro ito nang Hoy maganda rin yun. So we wow. also have that so yeah. we're um inaayos na lang po namin yung schedule noon perhaps you can even um link you up hook you up to the, uh, with them uh ayun po and then, meron lang po kami dalawang announcements um, sa upcoming events. So JP, could you please share the slides, please? Um, just very quickly. Uh, bago po tayo mag and, and may announcement po si Marty about kung paano niya makukuha yung certificates for this session. Um, last two slides, JP, uh, please yung sa events. 
So, ito po. Um, uh, not this one. Skip that. Um, we're gonna go back to that. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, meron po kami dalawang, uh, meron po kami dalawang web events. Yung una muna is, ano, um, doon sa mga nasa sciences dyan, uh, teachers and, and students. So, meron po kami web tutorial on oxidation states and balancing redox reactions. Alam ko po, hate na hate to ng mga tao sa, sa high school. So, meron yes. kaming session on June 12th. Um, so, it's for two hours. Um, uh, we've been preparing the material for this. So, ang, ang goal po namin is after nito, kaya niyo mag-balance ang redox reactions. Um, and then after this, uh, next slide. Um, ang lecture dito is web tutorial on the on uh, Lewis theory. So, yung mga hirap po mag, mag-draw ng Lewis structures dyan. Um, mahalaga po nating structures nung, nung, nung chemicals na ginagamit natin sa agriculture ano po so para pag sinabi yes. ko yung pangalan you know what uh, you know what the structure looks like mapapredict niyo yung property ganyan po so meron po kami follow up uh, lecture ito po medyo medyo mas Wait, Jeff you're nawawala ko so we announcement okay. party nawawala ako baka yung yeah. pop internet ko <laughs> when you found a buy the internet Um, yun po, medyo, medyo, medyo malaman po itong lecture na ito. And then, so, sana po makita namin kayo sa 12 at saka sa 29. And then si Marty, ako na bahala mag-announce ng ano. So, okay, so, uh, can I have the slide for certificates please para dun sa mga maghihingi? Ayan. So, ito lang po, konting paalala lang talaga kasi tuwing nagle-lecture po kami, marami kami natatanggap na inquiries about certificates. So, we will strictly follow these r- rules po ngayon. So, Uh, number one, we will publish a feedback form during the webinar. Ngayon na po yan, if isesend po yan sa ating Zoom chat and YouTube comment box. So, pakitingnan na lang po. Okay? So, ito po, papaulit-ulitin ko, walang feedback form, walang certificate. So, kung hindi po kayo nakapag-fill uh, up, I'm sorry na lang po kasi wala po kayong certificate. Nakakalbo na, 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 na po kami kasi madami po. Nahirapan na po Same. kami mag mga certificate. Actually. Yeah, but, uh, we appreciate your participation. Yun po. Uh, yes. Sana lang po. Uh, Oo, para lang po magkaroon ng sistema. And the form will only be active for two hours after the webinar to prioritize the live participants only. So we will be... Uh, The, the form will be up for two hours. So, ma- medyo mahabang liway na po yun. Pwede nyo pang i-rewatch yung webinar actually. Uh, <laughs> naman po, apot ng two hours. And then you can uh, go to the Google Forms. And we will send your attendance certificate via email within five days. So, kapag po five days at wala pa ang inyong uh, certificate, tsaka nyo pa lang po kami tawagan. Okay? Or tsaka nyo na lang po, tsaka nyo pa lang po kami uh, i-contact sa PM sa Facebook or uh, sa email po namin. So, those are, again, no feedback form, no certificate. Strictly na po yan ngayon. <laughs> Next, we have JP. Ayan, I think, I think that's okay. all that we have for now. So, ipopost po namin sa YouTube ayan, ayan. live YouTube ayan, channel. Ayan, some link. Yeah. Uh, will we show the, the teaser, Kuya JP? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but, but, yeah. Yeah. So we are very happy to announce. Dito po namin first siya announce. So we have uh, a partnership already. So can you uh, can you please stand, hold on and watch for this teaser video? Wow. Wait a minute, ah. Okay. So, 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 okay, just to uh, give you guys an idea, so our, our platform has been growing at, a, at an exponential rate um, and maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. And um, since yung demographic po namin is actually covering um, um, the educational sectors, so we got approached by, by, by a large multimedia platform right now to introduce their app. Um, as a tool for for education. So, ito po, um, this week, uh, this weekend, makakakita po kayo ng contents dun sa page namin um, promoting um, y- yung mga social media platforms na yan. This is it. Walang tugtog, kuya. Sound. Walang sound, JP.
Nakamute ba si JP? Yeah. Ako, hindi naman. Okay, it's okay. Um, so, yo po, we're partnering up with TikTok po. So, over the next couple of months, you're gonna see us rolling out contents um, promoting TikTok. Learn with TikTok po. So, yun po yung campaign namin. So, it, it could end up like, you know, um, being a long longer-term partnership. So, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong mga sumusuporta. Um, we hope to actually see you sa mga susunod po namin mga events. Um, marami pa pong parating. Iba-iba po ito. So, lahat po nung Um, spes- lahat po ng areas, um, um, perf- career areas sa, sa, sa Pilipinas na, na, na napaka-relevant po sa panahon ito, susubukan po namin ihatid sa inyo. Let's start pa lang po tayo sa agriculture. Uh, we're, we're actually, again, maraming maraming salamat, uh, Dax and Jim. Um, sana hindi ito yung huli, uh, as I said earlier. And then meron pa po yung mga kapatid pong areas nila, um, susubukan po namin ihatid sa inyo. Yeah. So I guess... Uh, Yeah, so I guess ang Thank sinasabi you. ko, Jeff, Jeff, is uh, since nagsimula kami sa agriculture, we will have the applied sciences yep. sa mga next. So yung application ng STEM, uh, not only in the natural sciences, but also in the application part. And again, i-echo ko lang yung sinabi ni Kuya Jeff kasi parang nag nawawala-wala siya or nagpuputol-putol. So we had, we, we, we are now partnered with TikTok. So we are actually... Nasa conceptualization phase pa kami kung paano namin i-roll out yung mga videos para mapat- mapanindigan namin yung hashtag learn on TikTok. So, I hope samahan nyo po kami sa venture namin yun and also, we would like to encourage you to also use the platform for your educational uh, materials. So, kung one minute video, that would be fine, catchy for the students and then just have the lecture after. So, again, th- uh, thank you to Dax and Jim. Uh, para sa pagsama sa amin ngayon sa aming webinar. I hope maraming natutunan ng ating mga teachers and mga students and also yeah. agri, agripreneurs, future agripreneurs and uh, yung lahat ng enthusiast ng agriculture. Any parting words kung meron man sa dalawang speaker natin? Jim, mauna ka na. <laughs> okay. Ako, thank you po talaga Sir Jeff and to the rest of the team of Phil Filipina Science Hub and to the viewers for tuning in. Thank you din po. Um, and Sir Jeff, kung kailangan nyo po ng mga model for TikTok, um, pwede po kami ni Dax. <laughs> Magti-TikTok you po tayo. Have, can, <laughs> if you want, you can one, you can have one agriculture team. Oh yeah, yeah. We would we definitely, we would we definitely yeah, agricultural content. Yeah, just just to educate and engage. You can even promote your page. Um, you know. Uh, we would welcome entries from agri uh, from 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 Dream Agri Tech. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Okay. And then and then po, I just actually want to say, maraming salamat po, kasi we reached like I think like more or less more than about 250 active participants. So you know, Whoa. people come and you know we yeah it, it's we actually have to say you know like for I mean it, we were it, we were quite um. We were quite um, concerned like you know like um nung, nung roll out namin kasi may, di ba ang hirap talagang i-convince yung mga tao um, na mag-pay attention sa agriculture but I think uh, this is this is this is a fairly good turnout this is a great turnout I, I so um so ibabalik po namin si Nadax for that's for sure <laughs> yep as the yes. page goes yep. okay so with that uh, kuya JP issue show mo pa ba ulit or hindi na yeah. Ah, si Dax, si Dax pa pala, sorry. Oh. Ah, sorry okay, um, okay lang, okay lang, uh, Marty. Uh, so, yun lang, I just want to thank uh, again uh, Phil Saiha for this opportunity na to share uh, one of our passions and one of our advocacies na to get um, the youth um, interested in agriculture. And um, this is uh, also a part of um, Dream Agritech's mission statement to encourage um, a new generation that uh, farming is a viable career. And... Um, So, ayan. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for helping us accomplish one of our missions. And, ayun, ano, I would just like to remind everybody, yun nga, para kung gusto nyo mag, maka, mas, ma, mas matuto technically about agriculture, um, yun, like we've mentioned earlier, um, please do head on to our Facebook page as well, um, Dream Agri Media and Dream Agritech Consultancy Services and our YouTube, uh, Dream Agritech. So, um, yun lang po. Uh, thank you again. Thank you to Kuya Jeff. Thank you to to Marty and to all um, 
the team, the whole team of uh, Phil Sci-Hub, thank you, thank you so much for this platform and this opportunity. All right. So, ayan, with that, we will wrap up this webinar. I mean, nakita lang akong comment na biotechnology daw. May course tayo sa UPLB na agricultural biotechnology. So, ah, yes, rin. yes. Uh, I think na-miss yata sa slide. Yeah, we missed it. We missed it. Yeah. So, meron na ngayon na agricultural biotechnology. This is about yes, uh, and your... Also, they're asking about nanotech in agriculture. So. Yeah, nanotech in agriculture. I guess... Uh, very ano yan sa soil science, pwedeng application niya is soil science and nanotechnology. Anyway, we are wrapping up this <laughs> webinar and maraming maraming salamat po. We will be showing again the teaser for our TikTok and have a good lunch everyone. Thank you to our speakers and thank you to our participants. Thank you everybody. Thank you po. Maraming salamat. Marsh, ito naman na lang ganun. Oh, she's in the